I didn't get my drink ready yet. Okay. Showing up, yes. Good. All right, so we are having green sambuca, but I haven't poured any yet. All right, tonight, Tipsy Tuesday, green sambuca edition. People are signing. Oh, good. People are just popping on. There was a little delay there, I think. Um, my mom is asking if I'm on Facebook. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. So I'm all over the place, Mom. Hi, Laura. Hi, Daoud. Good to see you. Hope to see you in person sometime. That's my guide in Jordan. Um, Holly, hi. Another Laura, hi. Friday. <laughs> yeah, the Friday edition. Um, okay. Good, all right, I'm making sure all the comments are working. I'm doing uh, the Facebook one a different way today to make sure it works. Okay, Megan got a shout out from Nikki Positano. Yeah, she's very nice. I just saw that as well, like right before I went on. Um, she is a friend that I have not met yet, but we've talked quite a few times. All right, so. Tipsy Tuesday, Green Sambuca edition. Oh, I see my dad's here. Hi, dad. All right, so this is Green Sambuca. Now, if you've ever traveled with me to Rome, you've probably had this because we get it at a restaurant called Abruzzi. And that's where we often go, oh, hey, Jim. That's where we often go for our final meal, or sometimes if the itinerary doesn't permit that, we go a couple days ahead of time. And this is the after dinner drink that they serve. So it's, it's kind of one of those drinks that people either love or they hate. Some people say, you know, it might grow on them, they'll get used to it. Um, but it's a weird drink. It tastes kind of like a black jelly bean, um, like Sambuca. So in America, you can get Sambuca. You can get the clear, or they call it white, or you can get black Sambuca um, at pretty much any liquor store. But the green is impossible to find um, outside of Italy. Uh, at least I don't know anyone that's been successful yet. Um, Abruzzi, the restaurant, they sell it at the restaurant, 20 euro per bottle. Um, so when I take groups or my day tours or just recommend it to people, a lot of times people will buy bottles to take home. And then whenever I travel back to the States, it's my number one request. People want me to bring them a bottle of green Sambuca home, which isn't that easy to do. Like sometimes I've taken back four or five bottles, um, but it's not easy to, to pack a lot of Sambuca. So I'm gonna have some right now. Um, now, typically, it's an after-dinner drink. It's a digestivo. Um, so I actually have the uh, official glasses from Abruzzi. So they gave me these glasses. I probably have, I don't know, six, eight of them. One broke. I think my kid broke it. And then we've given a couple away. Uh, but these are the glasses that they give you at the restaurant Abruzzi. So they're really heavy. They've got some nice like, detail in them. So it's a good uh, after dinner drink glass. Anyway, I'm gonna pour some. And I'm sure some of you back home have some as well. So you can see this color. It's almost like glow in the dark green. Um, that's some kind of food coloring, of course. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and have a little bit. So good. So let me show you this label. The label, it might be backwards. I don't know, because of the way the camera flips things. But the label is ridiculous. And I love it. But, you know, it's got the brand up here, Di Chico. It's got Chinterba of Abruzzo. And then it says Sambuca. So what the green Sambuca is, I was mentioning how you can find the clear and the black in America, or the white and the black. Um, but the green is mixed with Chinterba, which is 100 herbs. So it's another type of after-dinner drink. So this is kind of like a mix of Sambuca and the 100 herbs. And so, um, yeah, that's why it's it's traditional from the Abruzzo region. It's not just a regular Sambuca. And why you can find it at the Abruzzi restaurant here in Rome. Um, I see some people don't have good things to say about this. Like I said, you either love it or you hate it. I love it. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, the, the bottle. Yeah, so the bottle, crazy label. It's got a couple of deer on here. You've got the mountains of the Abruzzo region. And actually, the Vatican Nativity, um, which I'm sure you've seen, but it has the, the white neon. Um, oh, somebody's complimenting my hair, Kathy. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Um, the, uh, the mountains. Oh, in the, in the Nativity at the Vatican, they have the white neon that looks like this. It's the, the mountains of the Abruzzo region. Um, so it's a great label, and I'm going to pour a little more. It's not that strong. So, I mean, if you drink a lot of it, but it's, what is it? It's, well, maybe it's strong. I don't know. It's 72 proof. Is that strong? I don't know. Um, so the thing, though, with the green Sambuca is that you have to remember uh, that this is something you're supposed to sip. So sometimes I'll take people, and because it's served in these little glasses, or sometimes they bring out even smaller digestivo glasses, um, like this big. And so people think that it's a shot. And so they'll fill up their glass, and then they'll shoot it. And that's a mistake. And they quickly regret it because it burns going down. You can actually like feel it like travel all the way into your stomach. That's how, I guess, burny it is. That's not a right word, but that's how much it burns. So you're supposed to sip it. Um, now, a few years ago, actually, let me go back even further. So. On my pilgrimages, I've been doing this for, what is this, my 17th year, 16th year, 17th year. And I used to not drink at all on my pilgrimages because I was working. So when we go to the dinners and we'd have wine, I wouldn't have any wine or anything like that. Now I, now I drink, um, like I sip. Um, but at Abruzzi, everybody enjoys the Sambuca, but I wouldn't even drink this. I would make everybody else drink it, um, but I didn't want to have any because I thought it was too strong. But like I said, it's not that strong. People just kind of overdo it. And again, it's usually because it's the last meal of the pilgrimage, and so people kind of go over the top. They're having a lot of fun. People are doing toasts and all of that. So people have a bit too much. But um, what was I saying about the Sambuca? I keep losing my train of thought. I think it's because I have this new thing with that's connecting to Facebook and some other places. So it's popping up different types of alerts and it's throwing me off. So I apologize. Oh, I was going to mention the, the recipe. So I talked about the label, how it's this amazing, iconic label that's ridiculous at the same time. Um, but a few years ago, uh, I had a group and we were at Abruzzi and it was just like any other night. We get the carbonara there. 
We have salt and mocha for the second course, and then the dessert, and then they bring out the glasses. So we, we were telling everybody like, oh, the green sambuca, you're gonna love it. And, um, and then the waiter, who a lot of you probably know, Carlo, ball guy, glasses, best waiter in the world. He brought out a different green sambuca bottle. It was the same brand, but it wasn't this day glow orange or green color. It was like a grayish green. And the label, I posted a picture on Instagram and Facebook so you can see it, but the label was muted and it was like a greenish color with silver lining. And instead of a deer, they just had kind of a deer head. And it was, it was quite traumatic for anyone that had had the original. And it wasn't terrible. It was just different. So it was kind of like the, um, I think I said earlier, like New Coke. It was a different recipe and different packaging. And we found out that the reason they did that was because they were hoping to get international distribution, which I know a lot of people would love because so many people want this in America. And so they were trying to appeal to other people because, you know, if you just saw this on a shelf in a liquor store in America, especially in the age of like craft beers and craft bourbons or whatever you call those. And you're probably not going to pick that up. And so they wanted something that looked a little more adult. And so the same with the color. So instead of something that is clearly green food coloring, it was a very muted, like I said, like a grayish green color. Um, and a lot of people protested. So I mentioned that we get this at the restaurant Abruzzi. Abruzzi is right beside the, um, uh, what is that place? The Gregorian. So that's one of the pontifical universities where a lot of our seminarians study when they're in Rome. And then, well, seminarians don't have any money to go out to eat. But if, if they're ordained and there's, they spend more time in Rome or they're sent back to Rome after they're ordained, they live at what's called the Casa, which is right by the Gregorian. And Abruzzi is just a block away. And so it's very popular with American priests. And of course, a lot of the bishops and cardinals in America, they studied here in Rome. And so it's popular with the bishops and cardinals. And so anytime you go there, you see a lot of American priests and bishops and cardinals. And so there was so much uproar over this new recipe and the new label that the the company brought back the original. And so now they have, again, the original label, the original recipe, the original color. So it was a lot like New Coke, but they still make the new version as well. You just won't see it anywhere. And I see Joni asks on Instagram here, uh, the kind we had at Polese. Uh, Polese had, um, so they got it, for a while, they had the same green sambuca. They had the original, but in a different shaped bottle, like the teardrop shaped bottle. And then they also had the new recipe, like one bottle of that. Um, I don't think they have it anymore. It's all gone. Um, but usually you can only find it at a Abruzzi. And then speaking of Joni, because she just asked that question, we did a pilgrimage for Nashville where we went to uh, Lanciano, which is in the Abruzzo region. And I had never been there before, but I knew that this came from the Abruzzo region. I mean, it even says like right there, Abruzzo. And so I was on a quest. So, you know, you go to Lanciano for the Eucharistic miracle that happened there. And so we saw the Eucharist miracle, we had mass in front of the miracle. And then my secondary mission was to find uh, the green Sambuca. And so um, a few of us went walking around, we went to some grocery stores. Uh, and I did find not only other green Sambucas, but also a lot of other stuff by this brand. Um, but we went into this, uh, it was kind of like a cafe slash bar 
and on the back wall, and again, I posted this picture on Instagram and Facebook, he had all of these different green Sambucas, probably had like six or seven varieties. And speaking of like craft beers and stuff, they looked more like that. So like fancy labels, fancy lettering, uh, more muted colors. And so I asked him, I think it was still like breakfast time or something, but I was asking him about the Sambuca. And I brought up a picture of this one, the Di Chico. I said, have you ever um, heard of this brand? And he goes, oh yeah, that's terrible stuff. So apparently this is the cheap green Sambuca. And there are a lot of better ones. So there's one brand called Toro and they make a version which is supposed to be really good. But they also make uh, Chinterba or Chinterbe. My daughter will probably correct me in a minute. Um, that is popular. And you'll find that in a lot of restaurants here as well. Um, Mike is asking, does Abruzzi sell the glasses? No, they don't. Um, in fact, they don't even have these anymore. I think they gave us the last ones. So now they have, it's similar in that it's like the same height, but it's thinner glass and a different design on here. So I think that's the whole green Sambuca story. It's just, it's a really good drink if you like it. Um, and as I mentioned, it's my most popular request when I go back to the States, people want me to bring bottles back to ship to them. Um, I see DJ is asking my favorite place to drink the green Sambuca. So DJ has been on a lot of my pilgrimages and uh, once a year, well, not this past year, but we do a reunion trip where we go somewhere new. And so I always take a bottle of the green Sambuca with me because everybody that's, well, for the most part, most of the people on my reunion trips have traveled with me before. And so usually they've been to Rome with me. And so it's kind of exciting to have the green Sambuca somewhere else. <laughs> I see, um, well, I don't know what your name is, TK, your last name. Um, I Google green Sambuca and a picture of you came up holding the glass. <laughs> That's good. That's good branding right there by, by me. Um, so yeah, so uh, DJ's been on all of my reunion trips. So we've had the green Sambuca in the Holy Land. We've had it in Ireland a couple times, a couple different trips, and in uh, Lisbon. We had it in Lisbon. Um, but my favorite place that we had the green Sambuca, I think, would be the second Ireland trip where we were staying in the castle. Um, we stayed in this beautiful castle up in Donegal. And they, uh, when we arrived, they, it was like arriving at Downton Abbey. Like that's kind of what I felt like. We pulled up in our bus and it's a literal castle. And as we pulled up, they were clapping for us. They had the red carpet rolled out, like a, a real red carpet. And we came in, they gave us the welcome drink and it was, uh, Teresa, um, it was an amazing place. Beautiful rooms, beautiful property. Uh, I loved that trip. And so I told, like usually I would do the Green Sambuca maybe on the last night or just whenever it seems the most fitting location. And on that trip, that castle definitely felt like the best location. And so I told the hotel what I wanted to do or the castle. And they said, oh, we have just the room for you. And they gave us like this whole bar that they don't use apparently. Uh, the castle was in Donegal. The name was, um, I don't remember, long Esk something. If you message me, I can send you uh, the actual name. And I, I think I tagged the location on Instagram and Facebook when I posted it. Oh, I'm out, so I'm going to have more. Again, it's not that strong. So, yeah, I think that that castle was my favorite place to have the green Sambuca outside of Abruzzi. But we've had it in a lot of fun places. Um, let's see. I saw some questions. Um, 
What's the difference between the green, yellow, and white Sambuca? I don't know the yellow Sambuca. Uh, the clear or the white is what you can find um, very easily in any liquor store in America. And if you order it in a bar in the States, they usually put three coffee beans in it. And I've heard that it means Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but then I've also heard that it doesn't. So I don't know. Um, I don't know what the difference is uh, between the, I, I mean, I guess it's like coloring or something. But like I said, the green has the chinterbe mixed in. So it says that. I'll show you the bottle again. Again, it might be backwards. But it says chinterbe right there. And then Sambuca. So it's two types of liquor mixed. So the clear is just clear. And then the dark, I don't know what the dark has in it that makes it dark. Um, okay. Uh, I'll come back to the Sambuca, but I'm looking at some comments and questions. Kathy says, the green drink is better than the weird triangular red drink. I don't remember that one. So Kathy, I went to high school with, and I did a friend trip. Um, it was 2011. So some of my friends from high school came on that trip. So it wasn't like a pilgrimage, even though I took them to a ton of churches. Um, but it was just a way to hang out with some high school friends. So I don't remember a weird triangular red drink. I don't know what you're talking about. But that was 10 years ago. Um, is this the same thing as Galliano? I don't know what that is. Sorry. It sounds familiar. I probably should know. I should know, but I don't. Sambuca is the devil. I have bad memory. <laughs> Bad memory, summer of 1982. A lot of people have bad memories of Sambuca. Like I said, it's usually something we serve on the last night of pilgrimage. So it's like eight or 10 days in, everybody's gotten to know each other, everybody's having a lot of fun. And so a lot of times people overdo it, even though I warn them ahead of time. Um, I saw another question, where was it? Cool bottle. I love the bottle. I think it's great. I was so mad when they changed it. Uh, John says we had this in Lisbon. That's right. We had it on our last night in Lisbon. We should have had it earlier. Because we waited till the last night. That's the other problem with waiting till the last night is that people have to get up early and fly home the next day. Kathleen says, does it taste like licorice? Yes. Um, a black jelly bean. That's how most people describe it. Some people, I think it's in their head, but they think because of the green color that it tastes like mouthwash. But I think if you had mouthwash and this side by side, you would know the difference. Um, I used to tell people it tasted like mouthwash, but I don't think it does. It tastes like a black jelly bean. That's the best way to describe it. Um, other questions here? Um, uh, sorry, I'm scrolling right now. Oh, so Galliano is Sambuca? I didn't know that. Love the chair, thank you. It's uh, orange, it's my Catholic Traveler colors. Um, where are we? The most popular drink in Rome. I, uh, if you walk around, the most popular drink in Rome, the thing you see the most would be, other than wine, would be Aperol Spritz or Negroni. Um, I don't know if they're the most popular, but that's what you see the most. It might just be that they stand out um, because they're orange. Um, but if you go out before dinner time, you'll see a ton of people drinking Aperol Spritz or Negroni. Uh, have I been to the home of St. Maria Goretti? No, I have not. I've been to her church, visited her tomb, but we haven't been to the home. Um, someday. Gloria is sipping green Sambuca and daydreaming of Abruzzi. 
Yeah, I'm turning over Brutzi too. So Brutzi, a lot of you know Brutzi. It is open. They reopened after the quarantine. Um, but because there's not a lot of people here and a lot of their clients are American, it's not a touristy place. I mean, I guess it is because it's Americans. Um, but it's not like an, a touristy place that you would find like right in front of like on Piazza Navona or something. It's, it's full of Americans because like I said, it's right by the Pontifical University and where a lot of American priests live. And so, you know, when priests go home, if they know somebody that's coming to Rome, they're always like, oh, you gotta go to Abruzzi. So you always have Americans there. And so because of that, um, when they reopened after quarantine, they didn't have a lot of um, people coming in. Uh, they do get a lot of Italians too, but even Italians weren't really going out for a while. And so not all the servers are back. And each day they just have now one cook and one server. Um, so I mentioned Carlo at the beginning who works at Abruzzi, who a lot of people love because I always have Carlo when I take my groups. Um, he hasn't been back to work since February um, or maybe beginning of March when everything shut down. Um, so yeah, that's awful. Uh, I think it tastes like mint. I don't think it tastes like mint. Some people think that. I don't think it tastes like mint. I think that some people think it tastes like mint because of the color, but I don't taste mint. Maybe some people do. I think again, blind taste test. I think if you had this and the clear beside it, you wouldn't know the difference. So if you don't like clear Sambuca or the white Sambuca, you wouldn't like this. Uh, Jane asks, where can you buy it in the States? You can't get this in the States. Uh, the clear and the black, or the white and the black, you can get at pretty much any liquor store. Um, let's see. We did a blind taste test in December. Knew the between what, the old and the new? Um, I don't remember that. Oh, Amanda's here. Hi, Amanda. She's making Amatriciana. That goes well with green Sambuca, but you would drink the green Sambuca afterwards. All right, what other questions do we have here? Gloria says licorice all the way. Sipping is the answer. Oh, okay, so we tasted in December, we did a taste test between the clear and the green couldn't tell the difference. Yeah, that makes sense. I am funny, subtle funny. <laughs> That's me. I'm very subtle. And this is gone. So I'm going to get a little more. Not too much. I'll just go one line. All right. Uh, still listening to Christmas music. I don't know if you can hear the Christmas music. Um, but it's still Christmas here in Rome. Tomorrow is Epiphany. Actually, we put the witch on the tree. Do you see her there? Might be hard to see. So the witch comes tomorrow. And in Italy, that's who brings the gifts. Um, we opened all the gifts on Christmas. So we're not doing gifts on Epiphany unless we find something else. Uh, Kathleen, yes, you hear Frank. That's right, listen to Frank Sinatra. Amanda has her glass, but no Sambuca. So Amanda is out of Sambuca, so Christina, we need to send her some. All right, uh, yeah, so tomorrow is Epiphany here in Rome. I know a lot of you in the States, you had Epiphany on Sunday. So your wise men in America are a lot faster than the wise men in Italy. So tomorrow's Epiphany. If you've been keeping up with our very confusing Christmas lockdown. Uh, yesterday was an orange day. So that means that yesterday we were allowed to go out uh, without having our papers. Um, oh, Gloria, Amanda, you're on Instagram. Gloria's on Facebook. Amanda, Gloria says she misses you. So I'll, I'll pass messages between 
the two social medias. So yeah, yesterday was an orange day. Um, so we could go outside. And in the morning, it was a beautiful day. And we were planning to go out in the afternoon. And when the afternoon came, it started pouring and storming. And then today, because of the way the Christmas lockdown works, the day before a holiday is a red day. So today's a red day, which means we can't leave um, unless we're just going out for exercise, like a walk or a run, going to mass, going to the grocery store, going to the pharmacy. Um, but today it was rainy too. And then tomorrow is a red day. And then on the 7th, because um, a lot of people were asking about what's going on with our the virus stuff. On the 7th, we go back to yellow, I think. They're kind of still talking about what the plan is, but on the 7th, we're supposed to go back to yellow, but it's going to be a strict yellow, whatever that means. I think it means we can't go between regions. So if we're in Rome, we can't go to Florence, for example. Um, but then the weekends, they're debating if those should be red or orange. I think they're leaning towards orange for the whole country. So I don't even really know anymore what the difference is between yellow and orange. So I'll let you know once that's official. Because our orange days feel like our yellow days. Um, I guess the exception is restaurants. So on yellow days, we can dine in for up to 6 p.m. So we can go to lunch, and then I guess an early dinner. But nobody here would have dinner that early. And then on orange days, restaurants are only available for takeout. So maybe that's the difference. I don't know. It's very confusing, and it's getting very old, as I'm sure a lot of you feel as well. Uh, Colorado is back to orange, I see. So restaurants can do dining in. So it means something different in Colorado. Um, I did see something today that said the vaccine in Italy. So they've already started. They've done, I think, a couple hundred thousand vaccines. But the way they're doing it, and maybe it's wrong. I only saw it in one place. So I don't 100% know if it's true. Um, but for people 60 and under who are just like normal, like not essential, I guess, they are not set to get the vaccine until October or November. And so if that's true, that's awful. Does that mean like 2021 is going to be pretty much like 2020? I would imagine if they don't let people get the vaccine until, oh, hi, Chrissy, uh, until November that they're not going to allow travel. I don't know. I don't know. But that wasn't fun to read. So we'll see. Once like I have official news, I will let you know. But I, for one, was certainly hoping that 2021, you know, things would start opening up. But as it is now, we can't travel between the regions of Italy, people from other parts of Europe can only visit for like approved reasons, well, I guess from anywhere, can only visit for approved, approved reasons. So yeah, Sandra in Rome says, word on the street is 2021 will be much like 2020. Father Jack says, pray for Georgia. Yes, we're definitely doing that. We've sent in our votes. So hopefully they made it. I don't, for the presidential election, we got, a, we got an alert that our votes were counted. I haven't seen that for this one yet. Hmm. Um, Kathleen, your husband. Yeah, your husband's from Abruzzo. You know Abruzzo. Let's see, Jerry, your family is from Abruzzo as well. We do not have that supermarket. So Jerry's asking about a supermarket, Esselunga. I don't know that one. Um, 
The difference between Negroni and Aperol is the type of alcohol they use. So Aperol comes, it's like its own drink. So the Aperol Spritz, I mentioned, it's one of the most popular drinks here. Aperol is made from, uh, what is it? Rutabaga. So Debbie's off to Mass. That's a good reason for leaving Debbie. <laughs> Enjoy your Mass. Yeah, so Aperol Spritz is Rutabaga, and then they add... Um, Prosecco and a little shot of soda water. And then Negroni, they use a completely different mix. Um, but they're similar colors, so a lot of people think they're kind of the same. Negroni's a little redder. Uh, let's see. I don't know your name, but your screen name is Dora VLE. Needs to get to Naples to see your granddaughter. Um, I hope you can do that. I I saw some families traveling uh, the last few weeks. Um, you just have to get approval from the Italian government. Um, yes, we do have Toadies here. That's our that's the grocery store that sells like a lot of the off brand stuff. So we have a lot of different grocery stores, but Toadies is off brand. So for example, you wouldn't find Coca Cola there, but you would find like cola. Sandra likes the red drink, so she likes the Negroni. Let's see, Kathleen. Uh, family makes homemade Sambuca. That's interesting. Green when they have the herb. Oh. So Kathleen, a, another person, a friend from the States, uh, from my parish back home. So her husband's family is from Abruzzo, so they make homemade Sambuca and they add the herbs to make it green when they have it. Probably not day glow green like this. Do you know, I wouldn't drink this for the longest time because I thought that it was gonna be like absinthe. And so if you know anything about absinthe, you know, the traditional absinthe can cause hallucinations if you drink a lot of it because of the wormwood that's in it. And so because of the color, like mentally, I was worried that it would do the same thing. So I wouldn't drink it, but finally I did. It doesn't cause any hallucinations, but this is it. Green Sambuca. Look at that. It really is a good drink. And I do, I have some friends from that friend trip that I was talking about that came in 2011. And they bought a bottle of green Sambuca they bought a green Sambuca to take home um, and they didn't, uh, they used it in cookies. So they made Sambuca cookies. Oh, Father Silloway's here. Uh, no, the bottle doesn't say absinthe. I mean, you lived here as long as I did, you would know. Uh, no, I don't think it says absinthe. It does say it's good. It says it's good in coffee which I think is funny that somebody would put this in coffee. I haven't tried that, but yeah, no. So it doesn't have absinthe in it. Some people, there was a rumor for a while that probably from some of the people at the NAC maybe that said it had codeine in it. Um, I don't know where that came from. It does not have codeine in it. I've researched that. But it is good for people who are sick. So I have a lot of friends who, if they're sick, they'll take a shot of green Sambuca. I guess it's kind of like people that drink whiskey or something. Um, and it helps. But it's probably, you know, it's got all the herbs in it, plus it's alcohol. So some people swear by it. If they're sick, they'll drink it. Um, I've done that before. Like if I had a sore throat, I would uh, drink it. Amanda says it gives her the opposite effect of codeine. So, <laughs> and you're definitely experienced with the green Sambuca. So yeah, Father Silloway says he does recall that rumor. He studied the knack. So maybe it's a knack thing. Maybe somebody there said that it had either absinthe or codeine in it. And well, there's also the knack rumor that 
Abruzzi is a Jewish restaurant. <laughs> um, so Abruzzi, I was talking about them at the beginning, uh, the restaurant that serves this. They are closed on Saturday. And, you know, in a very touristy city like Rome, you would think that's a terrible day to be closed. But when they first opened um, that part of Rome, it's near the Trevi Fountain, but there's a lot of businesses like right around there. And so like business office, office space. And so they were closed on Saturday because there weren't a lot of people around. And this rumor was started, or I guess people just assumed that because they were closed on Saturdays, they were Jewish. And so a lot of the Catholics that go there, a lot of the priests and seminarians, they thought it was kind of funny that, you know, they all go to this restaurant that's run by this Jewish family. And the dishes they're most famous for, the carbonara, that's pork. And then salt and boca, that's one of their popular dishes. So, um, yeah, they're not Jewish, I ask. <laughs> I thought the same thing for a long time because so many people said that. And then one day I just went up to the owner and I said, are you guys Jewish? Because a lot of people think you're Jewish because you're closed on Saturday. And then he explained uh, the whole thing to me, why they're closed on Saturdays. So rumors do get started. Um, what else can I talk about? We're almost to the one hour mark. I usually try to keep it at an hour. I talked about the virus, talked about Epiphany, talked about the green Sambuca, going back to yellow in a couple days, I hope. The modern Latinist says licorice is supposed to be medicinal. Hmm, I didn't know that. So maybe that has something to do with that as well. What else to talk about? Tomorrow, Epiphany here in Rome. I'm hoping to go to the Latin Mass. So we're allowed to go to Mass during our red days, but we're supposed to go to Mass close to home. Um, tomorrow, the Mass we're going to try to go to is like a 15 to 20 minute walk. Um, but a lot of people have been walking around on red days with no problem. Um, but Cardinal Burke is doing the Epiphany Mass at one of the Latin churches tomorrow. So we're going to try to go to that. Um, it should be really pretty. So, uh, Kathy, coming back to the triangular drink. Uh, oh, the Campari soda. Yeah, that's not, yeah, that's, that's not good at all. That's like a bitter. Um, so, yeah, that is something that people would drink after eating, maybe. Sambuca's better. Let's see. Uh, Frank asks, what white wine would I recommend? I'm not the person to ask because I think wine tastes like wine, like white wine tastes like white wine and red wine tastes like red wine. And I've been to a ton of tastings in different countries. I've had people like explain stuff to me and like, Seriously, if I taste a red wine, I'm like, oh, it tastes like wine. And if it tastes like white wine, it tastes like wine. Um, but I do like Orvieto Classico. And you can find that in a lot of liquor stores in the States. Um, so that's a really good one. Is there a traditional epiphany dinner? I have no idea. Um, I don't know. Somebody might say something. And I'll tell you, but I'm not sure if there's a, a traditional Epiphany dinner. Uh, Jerry keeps the Christmas tree up through Epiphany, but open the gifts on Christmas Day. Yeah, that's what we do. Uh, a lot of places in Rome will keep it open until, or keep it up until um, the presentation, so into February. Sometimes the Vatican does that. Sometimes they take it down early. Um, I have no idea what they're going to do this year. Uh, what other Digis TV do I like? I love Averna. That is actually my favorite. Um, that's my favorite after dinner drink, the Averna. So you can find that in America. It's an Amaro. Um, there's a lot of different Amari you can buy. Uh, but Averna, it's available in the States 
And I like that more than I like this. This is fun because you can only get it at Abruzzi or in the Abruzzo region. But Averna, I think, is really good. So it's dark. It's brown. It's a bunch of herbs. And usually you would mix it or you would mix it. You would put it on ice. Um, so that's my favorite. And actually, I got a bottle for Christmas. Uh, Sharon says, anything so like the seven fishes? Yeah, so that's the Christmas Eve dinner. I don't, yeah, I don't know about anything in, for Epiphany, like an official drink. Okay, do you have any other questions? I don't think I've missed anything. Um, so uh, Saturday, well, Saturday is an orange day, so I guess Second Cup Saturday will be from home again. But Tipsy Tuesday, I can do at the earlier time, so the 5 p.m. time from an actual bar. So we'll see what opens up uh, for next week. Um, what is Amaro? What does Amaro taste like? So I'm really bad about explaining drinks. So when I take people to um, an Italian restaurant and they bring out all the different drinks, so usually it's limoncello and some type of amaro or a green sambuca, like at a Bootsy. So I use, I, so I say the sambuca tastes like a black jelly bean or that some people think it tastes like mouthwash. I say the limoncello tastes like floor cleaner. Um, it's like Lysol or something, I don't know. It smells like what my mom used to mop with. So I never tasted the floors, but kind of what I would think it would taste like. And then the Amaro, I say, tastes like flat root beer or flat Coke. Um, but I love it. Like, it's really good. It's just, it's, it's got a good, it's got a good taste. Um, but again, I'm not a good salesman for, for alcohol. Uh, Daniela says, hi, say hi to Cardinal Burke. I'll do that if I see him. Um, Gloria Lowell with the floor cleaner and licking floors. Uh, did I, will there be more fireworks on Epiphany? Um, I don't think so. Uh, Italians shoot fireworks for like any occasion, um, but it won't be anything like New Year's. That was, that's just crazy. Uh, did I see the starlings dead on the ground after New Year's? New Year's? Yes, I did. Um, yeah, they ran, you heard heart attacks, but I heard they ran into buildings. So that happens, like birds get disoriented, they will fly away, and they don't, I guess, whatever the starlings do, connect to the other birds, and so they crash into buildings. So there were hundreds of birds dead on the street near the train station on New Year's Day. So that's a great way to start the year with birds falling out of the sky. Um, sad, of course, too. Uh, Kathleen says, I need to make a limoncello spritz. I've never had one of those. I'll have to give that a try. I usually do, when I'm in a spritz mood, I do Aperol spritz. All right, anything else? What else do I have to tell you? I don't know what else I have to tell you. I'm looking around the room to see if there's something to tell you. I don't think there is. We talked about the Green Sabuka Epiphany. Kathleen says, how's the family? Uh, the family's good. Everyone's good here. Uh, oh, what is the word for immunization passports? I've only seen like a few articles about that from the States. I haven't heard anything about that here. Um, Italy has said that they're not going to require the vaccine, so I can't imagine they would require an immunization passport. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Will the cook, will the carbonara cooking class be coming soon? I ask my wife that every day. We're actually going to have it tonight as she tests it yet again. We have carbonara like a couple times a week now because um, for my patrons, so my patrons, 
uh, helps support all the work I do. And in turn, I do a few exclusive things just for the patrons. Um, and we we did a cooking class for Amatriciana. And then we're trying to do the next cooking class uh, to be carbonara. And my wife makes very, very good carbonara, but she's not yet comfortable cooking it while being <laughs> live to a couple hundred people. So she's still working on it, but I think it's, it's already perfect. Um, did not find the green uh, Molinari. Okay, so just the clear. Yeah, I, the green, there's a lot of brands, but you can really only find them in the Abruzzo region. Scott is here. Uh, enjoyed listening while playing with wine. Yeah, you make wine. You make good wine, Scott. Uh, Sharon cooked the Amatriciana last week, but used a different cheese. Yeah, so it's not as easy to find the cheese that we used. Or that, no, it's easy to find the Pecorino, I think. Not as easy to find the meat, guanciale. Kathleen loves being a patron, and I love you being a patron, Kathleen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and yeah, so Teresa says, how about cacio e pepe? So yeah, we Christina makes, my wife, she makes a really good cacio e pepe. And so that's something that we want to do as a cooking class as well. But again, she keeps practicing it. She just needs to do it because it's going to be great. Um, but carbonara and cacio e pepe are very easy to make and also very easy to mess up. Um, because with the carbonara, if you cook the egg, like, well, at all, because you put it in after the pasta is done cooking, you put raw egg in. And if it gets too hot, then it kind of scrambles. Um, so yeah, it's easy to mess up, but it's it's an easy dish to make. Sharon loves being a patron, thank you. Laura's looking forward to the next patron event. I am too. So I'll do more like church tours and stuff once our restrictions lift. It's just been a crazy month. And I've talked about this a few times, but the Sherry loves the cooking class too, good. Um, the, the restrictions that we've had over the past several weeks. It's not because the virus was bad, but it was preventative. So they were trying to prevent gatherings. And so that's why it's kind of weird. Like some days we can go out, but we can only go so far from home. Some days we can do this, some days we can do that. And so it's just been confusing the last couple of weeks. And then when we can go out, usually we have to have a paper with us and we have to be out for a certain thing so if I'm holding a camera filming like a church or something, then I don't know. It's just crazy. But soon, more patient events, more cooking classes, more church tours, more museum tours. Well, the museums aren't even open. Uh, Christy asks, have I been to Rocciola? Yes, I have. Uh, I've never had their Cacio e Pepe, but I did, um, I went a few months ago, and it was a fun event. It, was, uh, it wasn't it was even an event. I went with a friend, Sarah Murdoch. Um, she kind of works for Rick Steves, like she did, but then maybe she didn't. She's doing her own thing now. Um, and we went, and it was with the owner and her husband, I guess her co-owners, and we just drank a lot of wine, and we ate a lot of food, and talked politics all night, which was awful. <laughs> it was, um, we were like talking politics for, it was about four hours. And so Livia, I don't know if, if any of you know her, she's on Instagram, Sarah Murdoch. She has a lot of social media stuff going on and then the family. Um, that owns the bar or the restaurant, the wine bar restaurant we were at. It was, it was not fun. <laughs> uh, 
I was I was alone basically. Um, anyway, we won't talk about politics. So uh, the Atlanta restaurant, Forza Storico. I don't know that one. Is that the same? So Father Jack, he's in. He's in Lithia Springs. That's like my hometown, like one town over. Uh, but St. John Vianney. Uh, I don't know that restaurant. So I know the, there's the pizza place in Atlanta that opened a few years ago. And they have one at the Brave Stadium now. Is that owned by the same people? I don't know. He's asking about an Italian restaurant in Atlanta known for um, I'm a Trichiana. So, yeah, I don't know that. But I haven't been really out in Atlanta for seven years because we've lived here for seven years. So when we go home, we're usually just at my parents or in Miami at my wife's parents. Um, so we don't go out that much. So I don't know this Italian restaurant. Um, let's see. Oh, when I'm back, we'll go. We will go. That'll be great. When I, was, when I was in Atlanta last in February, I went to St. John Vianney for mass. I don't know if you were there then. Um, but yeah, I went to, because I used to go to St. John Vianney when I was uh, younger. It wasn't my parish, but it was like one that we went to sometimes. And so I went in February. Um, okay, what else? Uh, anything else? Well, the cooking class. Love being a patron. I'm just reading through comments because those, those are good comments. I'm not going to have any more Sambuca. But tonight, oh, you got moved. Father Jack got moved there in July. Okay, see you later. Um, a funny story about that. So when I went to St. John Vianney in February, last Christmas, I started going to Mass every day. I went to daily Mass. And like I go to Mass a lot here in Rome because there's really no excuse because there's a thousand churches and seven of them are within two minutes from here um but when i went home i had to like drive to go to masses and so one night i went to saint john vianney and i don't know if you always do this i'm talking to a priest on instagram now by the way for those of you on facebook and youtube um but i went to saint john vianney for mass it was the evening mass and it wasn't in the church, it was in the chapel, which is right by the rectory. I mean, you know, you, you're the priest there. But the door is in the back, like at the back of the pews, and there's only like four or five rows or something. So I went there, I didn't wanna miss a daily mass. So I went there, it was like seven o'clock at night, maybe six, I don't know. And then the doors, I couldn't open and the mass had just started when i got there and but i'm like pulling on the doors and there's stained glass on the door so i'm looking in and people are kind of looking around like what's making all this noise and then i realized that maybe if i went into the building then i could come through the front door but then when i got to that door the priest was standing right there doing the mass and i didn't want to walk in from the front and so I went back outside. Again, this is February. It's really cold. And so I stood by the door on the back row of the pews, and I kind of watched the Mass from the stained glass, and I followed along the readings in my book. And I could hear, and so I counted it. I counted that as a daily Mass, because even though I wasn't inside the room, I was there. Anyway, uh, how do you become a patron? Uh, so you can go to my website, thecatholictraveler.com. Uh, there's a link on the homepage to become a patron. Also at the bottom of all the, page, all the pages, there's a patron link. And you can sign up there. And so, yeah, you're supporting the work I do. I don't have any tours right now, um, but I'm still creating content all the time um, so that people can experience Rome while they're away. And then also you get some other benefits um, like the live events, some a, a few excuse, exclusive live events. Uh, anyway, I was mentioning this. 
Green Sambuca, Tipsy Tuesday. Um, one of my favorite drinks in Rome. And a lot of people love this who come on my pilgrimages. And so last week, it may have been Gloria that said this, that I should do a, I should have Green Sambuca for Tipsy Tuesday. And so I did. Just a little bit left here. So these are the glasses from Abruzzi. It's all gone. And what else? Oh, Father Jack talking about what I said. You haven't had mass in the chapel since March. Yeah, you need spacing. Because that was a tiny chapel. Anyway, I thought it was a funny night. Um, I just was freezing out there. Um, yes, Gloria, I know she's your sister. Okay, so I'm going to sign off, and we'll do this again next week, either same time, same place, my home, or I'll do it earlier from a bar. Um, our bars have to close, bars and restaurants have to close at 6 p.m., so that's why when I'm not at home, I do it at 5 p.m. my time, which is crazy early for you back home. Um, I know nobody, especially in California, is drinking at, what is that, like 7 or 8 a.m. So anyway, we'll sign off now. Uh, Merry Christmas. It's still Christmas. Um, have a happy epiphany if you're not in America, because we have epiphany tomorrow. And I'll talk to you soon. All right. Ciao.